Hello and welcome to Shipley Rowing. Rowing is one of the oldest sports in the country, made famous in part because of Philadelphia's contributions to the sport. Every year, Philadelphia rowers win races all over the world. And our very own host club, Penny C, hosts probably half a dozen Olympic hopefuls for the 2024 Olympics in Paris. Philadelphia hosts one of the largest scholastic regattas in the world, in the Stosbury Regatta. And winners of that event are often some of the best scholastic crews in the country. It's a sport that demands cooperative effort in every aspect from start to finish. Because of the length and the weight of the equipment, you cannot even um, get the boat down to the river without a practice choreography of moves that our students learn from a very young age. Rowing often earns the reputation for being exclusive, elite, and not diverse enough. Some of those criticisms have plenty of merit, and some don't. As you'll see when you get in the boat, you can't easily pick up the sport like you could pick a ball or run it. Don't get us wrong, we love those sports. But yes, it can be expensive for schools and programs to get involved with. In many ways, Philadelphia is a front runner there as well. One of our Rowing Academy program partners is Philadelphia City Rowing. It's a nonprofit just down Boathouse Row from us who offers opportunities from stu for students from all socioeconomic backgrounds and coming from schools all over the city, the opportunity to enjoy this amazing sport. There's a basic confidence that you have to learn on the river before heading out, and sometimes that can really present challenging barriers to entry. However, once you learn the basics, rowing can be an almost mystical sport to those who play. Imagine playing in a perfectly choreographed band or in, a, in an elaborate dance routine with heart rate soaring over 200 beats a minute in essence flying weightless over the river. It creates bonds that can often be lifelong and the sport is easy enough on joints that practitioners from 5 to 85 years old regularly get in boats all over the world. The boats we'll be rowing in are a mixture of two different types of disciplines, sweeping and sculling, and vary in length depending on crew size, from about 45 feet long to 60 feet long. A four-person boat weighs about 60 pounds, and an eight-person boat weighs just over 200. They're made of a really fancy plastic material familiar to those who ride bikes or enjoy fast car cars called carbon fiber. In some places in the boat, this material is no thicker than about six eggshells thick. They're designed to be as light and streamlined as possible. If you're a fan of competitive sailing, you'll recognize the shape and function of all parts of the rowing boat. In 2016, Mythbusters got a Stanford heavyweight men's row, uh, crew to water ski off the back. That's about how fast they go. We understand the sport itself can be a little intimidating to some, and um, let me attempt to calm the nerves a bit. Understand that you'll be guided by what we humbly think is one of the best high school coaching staffs on Boat House Row, who will be following all of us closely as a safety vehicle. We're very, very lucky to have incredible assistant coaches here at Chipley. There are three basic conditions that you'll need to know in the boat. They all happen on the recovery. There are two parts to the stroke. The recovery, that's the part where you're coming up and you're not pulling on the oar. And the drive. The drive is where the oar is in the water and you're propelling the boat. On the recovery, there's three main parts. The finish, at all times you want to try to keep your back nice and straight, like you have a bunch of books on top of your head and you're trying to push them up in the air. You need to use your core to support your back and keep it safe. That's true for all sports, but especially important in rowing. The next position is body over. Here your legs will stay flat, but your arms will extend and your shoulders will pivot in front of your head. Again, we want to try to imagine the books on top of the head and have a good flat back to protect your back. The last position is called the catch. This is where my legs are fully compressed, straight up and down in the boat, and my arms are extended as long as possible. You want to use your legs first, then your body, then your arms last. Rowing is mostly a leg-only sport. The feet does move back and forth, and so that's a little bit of a misnomer for most people who are normally used to. The entire stroke looks like this. Because you have to row in a rhythm with other people, sometimes it's helpful to think of two little learning seats that we 
often keep store mill stores. One of the main difficulties in rowing is that um, the coordination of the hand movement. In order to get the blade in and out of the water, you have to lift the handle up and down. Sometimes that can get really confusing, especially in a boat where you're going forward but the boat is going backward, and it can be spatially very confusing. The easiest way to do this is imagine a table to be directly in front of your hand. On the recovery, you want to think of those hands sliding under the bottom part of the table. So my knuckles sliding on the bottom part of the table. As I get to the catch, I want to put the blade in the water, and that means putting the hand above the table. Under the table, above the table. Under the table, above the table. Under the table, above the table. Good rowing means that the hands are moving along the table in as straight a line as possible for as long as possible. You don't want there to be a big rainbow curve at the catch. Way up and then way down. Try to keep them as horizontal as possible. This is more challenging than it looks at first in the boat, but as with anything, the more you practice, the better you get. The last thing I'll say is you need to row in a rhythm with one another. The easiest way to do that is combine the under the table, over the table meditation in your mind with counting. On the recovery, we want to move up the slide slower than when we're moving back. Sometimes it's helpful to say one and two and three and while you're moving up on the recovery, so you're all moving together. It looks like this. My hands will go under the table, one and two and three and over the table, take the drive, under the table, one and two and three and over the table, take the drive, under the table, one and two and three and over the table, take the drive and under the table. One and two and three and over the table, under the table. You'd be surprised if you can just think of those couple peaks and nothing else, not get distracted by other things, how much easier it is um, to efficiently row. Next is the basic grip of the oar handle. You want to wrap your thumb over the end of the handle and your fingers over the front of the handles, like so. It's basically called a fish hook grip, with your wrist as flat as possible. You want to put a little bit of pressure on your thumb, so this part of the oar, which is called the button, pushes against that part of the boat, which is called the oar lock. In a good grip, you want your fingers to be as relaxed as possible, almost like a piano player's grip. The last thing we'll talk about is balancing the boat when you're not rowing. When you're not moving, the oars are the things that create stability in the boat. If you were to pull the oars, all the oars, all the way in, and everyone were to do that at once, the boat would immediately tip over. But the oars push all the way out, the button against the oar lock, so the bolt is very stable and makes the boat about 20 feet wide. The easiest way to set the boat when you're not rowing is you take both hands, hold them all the way into your body, trap the hands between your body and your legs, and use your elbows to press against the oar. Your left hand should always be slightly above the right, so even when you're setting the boat, you want to put your elbows against the body and hold on either to your knees or this part of the uh, boat, which we call the foot stretch. The oars are going to just stay flat on the water and skim on the water the entire time. For some of you, you may need to hold the handle in front of your knees so you don't let the person rowing in front of you hit your oar, or you may need to move back and again, strap the handles with your elbow. Again, the easiest thing is when the oars are resting on your legs, you're using your elbows to press the handle against um, your body and you're holding onto the boat. This is a comfortable, easy, stable way for others for you to set the boat while others are rowing.